Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you what I think is the best way to run your tracks uh, in Ableton in arrangement view. And I'm gonna show you how I set my tracks up in arrangement view and how quickly you can set yours up and be ready for Sunday service. All right, so let's get started. So I'm gonna go and open up live. And once it's open, I'm gonna go over, navigate to my folders. Then I'm gonna go down to Ableton Worship Templates. And so I have a, a worship template for arrangement view. Okay, so I'm gonna click that. And this is one that I purchased, um, but I did kind of make some modifications to it. But I'll show you what's in here before we get started. So I have a repeat MIDI track, a stop MIDI track, and then here's your audio click track, a MIDI tempo track, and then I have a guide and dynamic guide, and I'll talk about these a little bit later, uh, as well as the repeat and stop tracks, uh, and add locators, markers, and original track um, file here, audio track. <clears throat> and I'll kind of explain what all this is gonna be doing. It'll make more sense once you see uh, the tracks in. Now this is the modification that I made. I also created a loops uh, track, and if I open this, I have a count in, click, and then two loop, uh, tracks as well as a repeat loop MIDI and what this does is I, I disabled these tracks but if I were going to uh, use a uh, just a loop instead of doing a full uh, track you know if I just need a click track and then a quick loop I could actually uh, import those and just put them in here and then this repeat MIDI uh, clip here will actually tell it to just keep that loop repeating over and over and that way I'll have a click and a loop if I need it. So I'll just keep these in here just in case, but for this tutorial, we won't be using that. All right, so <clears throat> I have a worship set. We're gonna do the song Breakthrough, Can't Stop Singing Hallelujah for the Cross and Holy Ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the, the clock down here and I'll show you how fast that you can import your tracks and set them up um, for Sunday in arrangement view. So here we go, let's get started. So my first track was Breakthrough. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in breakthrough. Then over here in my folders, I'll click tracks where I keep all my tracks. And then I have a folder for arrangement tracks. And these are the ones that I set up in this format. So I'll open that. And then I, there's breakthrough, open that. And then here's the arrangement of uh, breakthrough. So I'm just going to drag and drop that to the bottom. And so then you see the whole track. Here are all the audio files for the track here. I'll shut that down. And then here is everything that's going to go up here on these tracks. So all I do is just go ahead and, and uh, highlight those, and then I'm gonna cut those, and then I'm gonna go up to the top here, zoom in, do a lot of zooming out and zooming in, and then paste it at the top, so all these tracks will match. Okay, so then I go down here and just delete these, because I don't need them anymore, and your first track is entered. Okay, and so I'll just go up here and just label this breakthrough. Right, and then I'm gonna to go to zoom out and go to the neck to the end of this one and start my next one. Okay. And so I'll zoom back in, I'll start it here. The next one will be can't stop singing. So I'll make that and then I'll type can't stop singing here. And here it is. Same process, drag and drop. Now it will always drop at the beginning. Um, of your session, unfortunately. So just zoom out and I'll, I'll just minimize the, the tracks here so you can see that. This time I'm gonna grab all of it, okay, all the way up into this repeat, everything beneath breakthrough. I'm gonna do that, highlight it, cut it, and then paste it right here. And always zoom in so you can paste it right on the beginning, okay? And then I'm gonna zoom back out. Then I'm gonna hold down shift and click just so I can get the top part here. And then I'm gonna cut it and paste it at the very top where it belongs. Okay, so once that's done, do the same thing, delete this. Don't need that anymore. Okay, and on to the next one. Um, and I'll go to the, oops, to the end of this and put a marker and make sure it's not too far away. And then I'll put my next song, which is going to be Hallelujah for the Cross. All right, so now I'm ready for that one. Same process. OK, 
Okay, so I'm gonna do this. I have a couple of them in here. Um, so I have D flat and D, I'm gonna use the one in D. Drop it down, so just drag and drop, okay? And again, go over here, minimize this. Go back to the beginning and you can just zoom out to get there quicker, okay? Highlight everything, Command X, and then come over to where it is. Command V, zoom out again, and shift click, Command X, and then go to the top. And then paste it. Okay, I'm actually gonna open this up and see everything. All right, so then that one's done. So I'll go ahead and delete everything here. All right, and I'm gonna zoom out again. And then I have my last song. Which is going to be Holy Ground. All right, so I have Holy Ground. Again, once I do that, I'm going to zoom out and minimize all my tracks here. Zoom out and to the very beginning, highlight everything. Cut and paste. Okay, zoom out again and then just highlight the very top. Cut and paste. Okay, so now you see that I have all four of my worship songs input uh, inputted for this Sunday service. And, um, and they all have their markers here. Now, uh, the next step is to put in all of your markers throughout. So for the verse, chorus, all that stuff, okay? And a lot of times, a lot of people do it manually. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Uh, it's where you don't have to input it manually. You can just let Ableton input it for you. So what I'm gonna do is, since they're all in here, I'm gonna go back to the very beginning. Zoom out, go to the very beginning, click on the first one here. Zoom in so I can show you what's happening. All right, I'm gonna... Minimize that so you can see all of the tracks here. So you see this MIDI clip is called add. It says add a locator. What this MIDI clip does, it tells Ableton that you want a locator uh, right before it. So when it hits this, there should be a locator that pops up right before it. Okay. So I'm gonna let Ableton do it. I'm gonna put the tempo to 999 and enter. That's the fastest you can um, put Ableton to the tempo in Ableton. And then I'm just going to start at the beginning. And what I'll do is I'm going to turn off the stop clip. I'm going to turn off the click and the guide and then um, all of the tracks. So I'm just turning off all the audio so I don't hear it while it's doing its thing. Okay, so I'm going to hit play and then it's going to start. So here we go. Oh, sorry. I need to actually turn on add a locator. So make sure that file, um, that uh, MIDI clip there is actually turned on and engaged. Now I'll start. You can see as soon as it hits it, it puts it right in front of it. I'm going to actually zoom out a little bit so you can see it. Now, every now and again, you'll see this right here where it puts it, uh, you know, just a little bit ahead of it. So it's just one bar ahead. So I just, after it's all finished, I just move those over. But I uh, just want to let you know, sometimes that does happen. All right. <clears throat> so that is the final track. Okay, and you can see how all of the tracks are kind of like messed up here. Don't worry about that. We'll fix that in just a minute. All right, so now that that's all finished, go back to the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the add locators uh, MIDI clip so it doesn't continue to add locators. And then the first thing I'm going to do is go through and just make sure uh, I fix the ones that did not land perfectly. Uh, so I'm just going to grab those and just move those over. All 
All right, so that's the last one. Now that that's all complete, <clears throat> one of the final things to do, and this is optional, is to uh, rename all of your locators here. Now, the way I do this is I take this markers clip and I just bring it to the top. Now, some people just use this clip as uh, their guide. I, I always like to uh, rename everything. So just my personal preference. So you just go through and the names are already on that markers clip. So I just uh, copy that and put it in. And I'm just hitting tab to move to the next one. All right, and that is the end of it, end of that part right there. All right, so the very last thing you're gonna do is now we're gonna make these uh, all these tracks line up correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna drag my markers track back down to the bottom here, and then I'm gonna turn my guide on, click back on, uh, and then my stop on, and then all of my tracks, turn those on. So we'll enable all of that. All right, and then the last thing is I'm gonna double click this tempo track, and then I'm gonna tell Ableton to make this song whatever this tempo track is, which is tempo track I set at 147 BPM. So I'm just gonna, instead of follower, I'm gonna make it the leader, and then it'll change uh, the track so that it lines up. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through, oh, one step I forgot was come up here and re-enable automation. Okay, so now I'll do that. Now it'll make the track. So now the track will line up to the end and click that one. Same thing. Just going to go through each one and make the tempo track the leader. And then once that happens, it will make your tracks all line up perfectly and you'll be good to go. Now you see all my tracks are in inputted and uh, we're ready for worship. So that took, took us to about 16 minutes. Um, if you're doing this, once you get good at this, I've got this down to about 12 minutes to get four songs uh, for Sunday. And 12 minutes is pretty quick to, uh, to do this in arrangement view. If you guys have found a different way to do it, please let me know if it's a little faster. This is the fastest way I could get all the songs put in and as well as all my markers put in. And less work because you can just kind of, once you have the songs in, like, you said, like, I, like I said earlier, you can just click and let it just run through and put them in for you. Now let's talk a little bit about what's happening in this template, okay? So I have a repeat track, a stop track, got the tempo track, which I talked about, and then I have two guide tracks, all right? Of course, we talked about the add locator, and this is a, an original track. So sometimes I'll put the original, um, just the original track in to kind of follow along if I need the original track for something, uh, but I don't, I don't always have that in there. Uh, most of the time I say I wouldn't have it in there, but every now and again, I'll have the original track that I added in. So I have that in there. Okay, so what this re repeat track, let's talk about what it's doing. So you see this repeat at the end of each section. Okay, so the intro, uh, intro, whatever verse. Okay, so let's talk about what happens. So if, uh, in worship, let's go, and we're on the song Breakthrough, so let's go to the part, um, let's go to the bridge. All right, so we're at this bridge, okay? Bridge unison, let's start here. So if I start this. And I have everything turned off. Let me turn everything back on. So if I wanna repeat this, if I wanna repeat this section right here, all I have to do is I've set my keys to uh, the letter R uh, and I've mapped that to the repeat and to the guide track. So if I hit R, you'll see that the guide here turns off, the dynamic guide turns on, and the repeat track turns on. So what that what happens is when I get to the end, so what happens when I get to the end, it hits this track and it triggers um, the track right before it or the marker right before it. So I can repeat this section easily. Okay, so as long as I have that down, it's just gonna repeat. As soon as it hits it, you'll see that light up, and it's gonna go right back to that section. Now when I'm done and I wanna get out of this section, I just hit R again, and again, you see that the repeat turns off and the regular guide turns back on. Okay, so let's talk about what's happening with the guides. So the guide track, the normal guide right here at the end will say bridge, okay? 
So if I uh, have that on right there and I just click that, let me solo this guide. Bridge, two, three, four. So it's going to say bridge and we're going to go to bridge, okay? Now, uh, this is actually not the best place to do it. Let's let's do it here, okay? Um, let's go back to right here. Okay, so if I so right here, this guide should say interlude. Bring it down, three, four. So that's the interlude. Bring it down to the interlude. Now this guide is going to say what's behind it, chorus. Bring it down, three, four. Oh, let me enable that guide. Sorry. <laughs> Chorus, two, three, four. Okay, so the dynamic guide, it tells you what's behind, and then the normal guide will tell you what's ahead. So what happens is if I want to repeat this chorus, for instance, and I turn on, let me unsolo that, and I hit R, I turn that on, it's going to turn this guide off and turn this one on so that when we repeat a section, the guide is going to be correct. It's going to tell us where we're supposed to be going and, and not mess up. So sometimes, you know, if you repeat a section, the guy will say like interlude, but you want to, see, so you have to say, no, let's go to the chorus. Well, this takes that out for you. So now, so we went back to the chorus and the guy told us where to go back to. Now, when I turn the repeat off, and tell us, to, tell us to bring it down and we're going into the interlude. So that's what's powerful about the guide and dynamic guide and then the repeat now the stop track is pretty self-explanatory when i get to the end of the song um, i don't want to hit stop so it's going to just stop for me okay so as soon as it hits this midi clip it's going to stop ableton okay just like if i were to hit the stop so if i'm playing in the ending i don't want to reach up and have to hit a space bar or hit something i want it to just stop on its own okay now the next um so that that takes care of the repeat stop uh, the click click track is pretty obvious what that is. That's just your click and your guide and dynamic guide. And we talked about what the markers do. So uh, in worship, typically what I do is I'll just highlight this stuff and group it and just call it control and uh, and then minimize it so that you, you can't really see it. OK, um, <clears throat> so that makes, you know, gives it a nice clean look here. So I can see what everything's what what's all happening, and then you can bring this out so you can see, you know, everything that's here. So this is like I said, this is what I found to be the quickest way to set up your tracks for Sunday worship in Ableton uh, for arrangement view. Okay, and um, like I said, if you guys have found a different way or a quicker way, please let me know in the comments below, um, and let me know what you think about this video and what you think about this this way to set this up. And uh, here soon, I'm going to be coming out with another video to show you how to. Uh, set up your tracks so they can go into this um, template. So that'll be a, another video coming out. But let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Thank you guys, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.